Om Shanti. Good evening and welcome to Madhuban. I think you must have been in in Gyan Sarovar for quite some time. How many hours? I didn't expect to be in the class that soon actually. I thought it would be either on 28th or 29th. But when I got the offer, I couldn't resist it. Because the topic is very interesting and simple. It's not me who is going to speak this evening, it's yourselves who will be speaking. Because the topic is the treasures and pleasures of Brahmin life. Unless we have received the treasures, unless we have enjoyed the, I, I would say the bliss or happiness of Brahmin life, we won't be here together coming all the way from different parts of the world, braving all the difficulties of travel, and that to knowing that Mount Abu is the coldest in the whole year at this time. And yet we are all together here. So the f first thing I would like to know from you is, what is so valuable to you in the form of finding treasures which has brought you here at this time of the year? Is it because of celebration of Christmas and New Year or something else? Because meeting Bap Dada and godly family that you could do in February, March. Why at the time when Mount Abu is so cold, the temperature goes down to six degrees, five degrees Celsius at night time. Days are of course quite good. So what is so precious? Because you go deep down the ocean only when you know that you are going to find some something very precious, some such treasure. You brave the cold of the mountains, you go to 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 dig the earth or, or the mountains to get something from there in the form of some diamonds. So what what is so precious? One is of course meeting Bap Dada. What did you find in your life on becoming a BK? Pardon? Silence. Silence we find always during sleep. <laughs> is something which which is very interesting which you really feel yes it is when we are born in this world they say that life is a gift of God it shouldn't be wasted it should be lived and lived with a purpose Similarly, after becoming a BK, 
what kind of life have you achieved or found holy life it's the most valuable life i would say in the whole cycle most precious gift one can achieve baba refers to this life in golden age it's golden life silver age silver like copper age copper like iron age iron like and what about this time the most auspicious confluence age diamond age so in diamond age it's diamond like life the most valuable first of all the intoxication of brahmin life which keeps us always in that state of consciousness of being very happy and blissful is to keep the consciousness that we are now in the diamond age confluence age and this is the most precious life diamond like life why is it called diamond like why not any other name is given to it though as a brahmin one has to struggle a lot fighting all sorts of uh, you can say attacks from maya and yet it remains diamond like what makes you feel it's the still it's the most auspicious it's the most valuable everyone is so quiet yes the only age when we have direct relationship with god good think of 10 points one is to find baba the other is sister says this is the time when we become unshakable because diamond cuts everything all all forms of maya okay third we have achieved didn't get you freedom yeah the most valuable thing is freedom freedom from freedom from lockics <laughs> freedom from bondage freedom from maya okay fourth point pardon we become flawless diamonds fifth we are decorated with virtue so virtuous life or life full of values then something you see now let us think this way let's consider who are the people in the world who are considered to be having a lot of treasures and they could be considered very happy beings in contrast to that what we have achieved and how can we say that our treasures are 
much more and much higher. The treasure of purity, all right, the treasure of values, then the treasure of knowledge. People are searching and your search is over or you are still searching. We are all here when the search is over. We have found what we were searching for. And that too, the first point was finding God. Not just in dream, not just in vision, but face to face. Second thing is, people are all the time talking about the beginning of this world and lately many people are talking about the end of the world but Brahmins because you have or we have received accurate knowledge about the eternity of the world the world is eternal goes through changes So the beginning, the course and the time of change, having accurate knowledge makes us feel so stable inside. There is hardly any, any kind of fear in the mind. When you read newspapers or when you see television, when they talk about the destruction part, I don't think you are moved even a little, because you know that whatever is happening, is happening for a better world. The world is going to be there. It's not going to be destroyed. So the knowledge part is something very valuable. Baba says, it's through this knowledge, you become the double-crowned kings and queens. Then the next, think of scientists. Their knowledge is considered to be very valuable. Now as spiritual scientists, what happens when you have mastery over mind? Through the mastery over mind, the science becomes subservient. Baba says this these scientists are going to serve you in golden age. They will be making your planes and, and other, other means of scientific, uh, you can say scientific gadgets. So, from science point of view, the science of spirituality to conquer one's own mind as is said, he who can conquer his own mind can conquer the world. Today, scientists are con considered to be the most powerful ones. They create most powerful weapons. But Baba says, these powerful weapons will destroy each other the scientists would come again in golden age and create new things for you which will not be having any destructive part in that. 
So as spiritual scientists, the treasure of having that knowledge or having that art with us that we are able to conquer the mind which people in all ages have felt it's the most most difficult thing what do you think as b case is it possible all the time no <laughs> ultimately you see after after becoming baba's children we have found that slowly and slowly we are able to conquer it if not all the 24 hours for 20 hours from 6 for 16 hours 12 hours 10 hours but it's increasing slowly and slowly so fighting the battle inch by inch with the aim that the victory is assured the success is assured the ultimate victory belongs to whom does it belong to maya or to us what has baba said in the previous murli have you heard that it's the time when maya is almost taking leave it's not going because we welcome maya sometimes <laughs> so conquering the mind <coughs> is one thing which is the most difficult thing but brahmins can claim victory the day we are all determined because that's what Baba has said the final weapon to use to conquer Maya is having determination having determined thought no more it takes hardly a second according to Baba's knowledge and according to our own experience the, mo the moment a thought comes a weak thought that is Maya you just take the help of the one you see normally if that connection is not known to us from where to get the proper guidance and help we would be churning about something whole day and night and still not able to conquer but the simplest thing Baba has mentioned is the moment you feel there is some weak thought just get in touch with whom? with the all powerful one call Baba because the other day when there was a celebration at Talati the little children performed and how they how a little child on earth talks to Baba in in subtle regions and that was so beautiful a scene to see you may be able to see on video and Baba himself referred to that in the Murli so you just call Baba in your own heart in your own mind and transfer the problem to Baba and in, in seconds it goes Baba's help comes because Baba says when you are determined because of your courage and determination Baba takes care listens and responds with immediate help all the material governments all the mundane governments all the worldly governments may not respond that fast at the time of disaster the presidents and prime ministers they try to help 
the disaster area as fast as possible. Still it takes some time. People suffer. But in, in Almighty's kingdom, Baba doesn't let anyone suffer. That is the greatest treasure to achieve in human life. Not just Brahmin life, but in human life. Any moment, if there is any problem, this is one of the experiences. On all levels, Brahmins have felt how Baba helps. But is it possible for you to get in touch with Baba within no time? Because from Mount Abu, the other lines are always having some erratic problems, some disturbances, communication problems, telephones and fax machine and email and all. They may not be working, but this wireless, spiritual wireless works very well. We are able to communicate without telephone, without material lines. So this is something to experience which we normally don't experience in life. There are some instances. So this is one thing very precious in Brahmin life to realize that at this time of the cycle, when Baba is practically doing his work, the work of bringing back the best of the world, the best in humanity, the best in material life, the best in spiritual life. This is the time when he does everything for us. So to feel that and to, to be happy about it brings so much joy, so much happiness. And within no time you can feel so relaxed, light. And you may be singing. One moment you may be tense. And the moment you transfer your, your thoughts to Baba, Within seconds, you feel so light and so good, you start thinking of some beautiful song. As we were listening to the song at the time of meditation, I don't know whether you understand the meaning, <laughs> but the feeling you could get so this is one thing which I have felt on seeing Baba or Mama practically. They had this realization, they had this experience and they had that blissful, blissful feeling all the time in their eyes which was conveyed to us without delay and which is n being conveyed to us even now. Baba had so much, so much appreciation of the knowledge, appreciation of the work, appreciation of this Brahmin life, how valuable it is how great it is, how noble it is. And because of that, Baba's own intoxication was so great all the time. And whenever there were some difficulties, there are such times after all, 
establishment of new age, establishment of new heavenly kingdom, there is resistance, there is opposition. And resistance or opposition is always bringing some or the other problems. And yet, Baba was so confident on one side, so confident. And the other side was his faith. It's not Brahma Baba's work. Though Brahma Baba is known as the creator of the new world, but still he knew that it's instrumental role. It's Shiv Baba who is the creator, the supreme soul. And therefore Baba would always have that kind of deep faith and express in words, well, it is his work. I don't have to worry. So that way Baba remained free from the worries of opposition, the worries of any ups and downs. And Baba says, follow Father. We have to have the same attitude. Then only we can enjoy what Baba says as Brahmins, carefree emperors and carefree empresses. Though busy, very concerned, and yet carefree. That would happen only when we have that appreciation of the present treasures. And the, the practical or you can say the, the treasure which is normally visible, very easily visible, what is that? Can you think of some such treasure which you can see all the time? Which makes you feel so happy? Anything? Smile. <laughs> Whose smile? Your own smile or everyone's smile? <laughs> in, in the olden days or in, especially in India, if someone had four or five brothers, four or five sisters, and all in good health and all earning members of the family, people used to feel very proud and happy, very intoxicated. Now what do you think? When you look at the whole divine family, the members of the divine family, how many sisters and brothers have you got? And all are earning members. No one is without a job. In laukic life one may or may not have a job, but in a laukic life, from the day we realize we are weak is, we get our jobs. earning millions every morning. And then multiplying that by sharing. That's what keeps us happy and smiling all the time. When we have had very nice morning meditation, 
and enjoyed the murli that brings very rich feeling inside automatically just like having had very healthy food and afterwards automatically it brings that feeling and when everyone is having that feeling you see the smile all around you feel so happy and then the expression comes oh what a great family i belong to all are wealthy all are busy in god's greatest and noblest work of reestablishment and all are having such harmony such love for each other that's what impresses even the strangers many people come to madhuban the new people and the expression is i haven't seen such a place in the world anywhere where all the people are smiling and so happy and so positive what is it doesn't it bring such happiness in in our hearts that we have such a beautiful family divine family holy family great family this is the appreciation we need to have about the treasure of belonging to the divine family because once baba specially mentioned this just as you should be so proud of the father or the supreme parents you should also be very proud of your divine family baba's direct help comes as a great lift similarly even the divine family inspires you uplifts you helps you that's why the power of being together is also so great and that is one of the treasures so feeling that that we belong to such a big <laughs> ultimately what will be the number of the divine family divine family not human family human family we know 600 crores or 6 6000 millions 6000 millions or 5 5500 millions but among all of them how many will belong to the divine family only 900000 1 million or more so belonging to that chosen family the select selected ones being part of that great family doesn't it make you feel so proud don't you feel happy about it 
So to have that appreciation in our hearts br would bring the feeling of possessing such invaluable treasures of life. Day by day, as we remain tuned to, to Baba, and keep enjoying different experiences in meditation. And on the other side, in contrast, you also know what is happening around, around the world. On one side, Beak is enjoying super sensuous joy. And on the other side, people are suffering. So what feelings would come in, in your own minds and hearts? If we start sharing the sufferings, because we feel concerned about it, what would happen? That's not the treasure I would like to possess. Feeling concerned, but at the same time, not sharing sorrows, but sharing happiness, giving happiness, even to those who are having sufferings. That is my role. That is our role. Because Baba's wisdom is, first of all, to become free from the bondages, sufferings, negativity. Otherwise, if I start becoming too concerned about the sufferings and unhappiness, I would start looking at the reasons, what makes the people feel suffer. And because of that, unless I am able to make the people understand, and take them with me away from that, it may affect me also. That's why Baba says, first of all, you have detached stage. And then give, give help, give power. Give vibrations. Now, this art is also very wonderful art. Becoming detached and then feeling concerned. There are many people who feel so concerned and because of their concern, they start suffering themselves. So we have to rise above that. And that comes when we keep company of the Almighty, the all-powerful one, then the soul becomes so powerful to remain unaffected. Otherwise, we all know as human beings, we have human emotions and we would get affected at any time. So, transformation of human emotions into the feeling of concern but before that, to become very powerful. So that is 
something to achieve, which Baba has mentioned. Give light and might to the whole world, to the whole globe, not just the earth, not just the elements. The first is the human souls. In fact, it's the human souls who can feel that there is some sort of help coming to them. Not the elements, they won't feel that. Why would the souls feel? Because of sufferings, now slowly and slowly the mind is turning towards receiving help. More the sufferings, more the change in consciousness. And consciousness of looking up to someone away from this world. So when we are in tune with Baba, we are able to give that help because the souls are willing to receive. They won't know from where it is coming, how it is coming. So this part of our Brahmin life is the most important part. If we have learnt this art, that's the ultimate. Because while we do this, our own victory is determined. And at the same time, we are able to convey, we are able to give the maximum help in Baba's work of re-establishment of Golden Age. So that way becoming worthy instruments of change Worthy instruments in God's work is also one of the main or one of the invaluable treasures which brings so much happiness to, to the heart. So we have to do a little bit of self-analysis. How far am I doing that? And while doing that, what's the intensity I have achieved? And along with the intensity, how much time I am able to keep that intense stage? Longer this intense stage, more the depth of feeling of bliss and for a longer time. When we have that, when we are enjoying that, that's going to keep us free from negativity. That's why Baba emphasized so much during Sakar days and even during Avyakt. That Brahmin means busy. Busy in studying and busy in giving, guiding. So that's what I said immediately on on becoming Baba's children, we have our respective jobs. And such jobs, when we do that, we get real job satisfaction. What more do we need in life?
So this is what I wanted to share. I was told you please share based on some stories from Sakar Baba and Mama. It's difficult. Difficult to, to share the stories when we have a subject. I can only see from their lives practically what I had seen. Baba and Mama were very sincere first in making efforts, very sincere in practice. And while being sincere, they were very, very appreciative of the Brahmin life, the life of world servers, and they had so much appreciation of the wisdom coming from Shiv Baba. I remember immediately after the Murli, Baba would go to his room and just take his red pencil and paper, writing pad, and write about at least ten letters to Dadi, to Didi, to Jagdish Bhai, to some others. And in those letters, what was written? Appreciation of what was there in the Murli in the morning. He would share, just sweet children, just see how beautiful were the, the jewels of knowledge Baba shared this morning in the Murli. Not what Brahma Baba had churned. Maybe some of that also, but those new jewels coming from Shiv Baba. And why would he write to them? Knowing that they are the ones who would immediately translate that wisdom into their own practical lives and share in their lectures, in their public discourses, so that the other people in the world can benefit. So we need to have that kind of appreciation. As I was mentioning about the appreciation Baba had for such jewels of knowledge, I remember one instance. Once we had organized one conference in Bombay, and uh, it was women conference actually because there were many suicidal cases in one part of India, women taking their own lives because they were not able to face the world, some problems, family problems. And many uh, social workers, social uh, work organizers, leaders, they, they were coming for that conference in Bombay. And Baba gave such a murli about that conference, especially keeping that in mind and speaking. And then Baba wanted to send the uh, tape. Those days it was you know, the, not the cassettes, not the CD, but spool. And the trains were all stopped because of heavy monsoon rains. Baba sent Vishwaratan Dada with the tape by flight so that he could reach there in time and Dadi could listen to that 
and then share that knowledge in the conference. So much appreciation was there in Baba's heart for the spiritual wisdom coming from Shiv Baba. You might have come across these words, sweet children, what Baba is giving to you in the form of jewels of knowledge, each one of them is worth millions. Who knows which, which point of knowledge is going to transform our lives. Many of us would share, oh, when I heard this, it struck my mind. When I heard this, it changed my attitude. When I heard this, it changed my whole life. So Baba had that, that appreciation that this is the spiritual knowledge which is not available anywhere in the world. The scriptures do not have that clarity. So when we have this kind of, the same kind of appreciation, what Baba had, and I, I have shared before also, Mama had such appreciation, she would read one murli thrice a day, and fourth time she would listen to that on tape recorder. Not that she wanted to become a parrot, listening and then speaking, no. The idea was to know in depth, to realize in depth the meaning of what Baba was sharing. And that we could see that because of her deep, deep appreciation and deep interest, how that wisdom had gone in every cell of her blood. We don't have very many murlis from Mama on, on tape. There may be a few. Those who understand Hindi would appreciate. Whenever she spoke, as is famous in India, Saraswati, the goddess of wisdom, the goddess of knowledge, we had that experience from her practically while listening to her. Time, otherwise I would continue. <laughs> so let's 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 have that appreciation and feel the joy that we are the ones, the most fortunate ones, to possess these treasures. And more, the more we study Baba's Murlis, the more we would realize. And not just studying, but then practicing as per the Murlis. So being a BK is, first of all, being very fortunate. Second, the wealthiest beings. Third, the most blissful beings. No doubt, when, when we have this realization always in our hearts, this is the time when we are playing our roles with Baba with the Supreme Parents, with the Supreme Father. 
there is no other time in the cycle when this happens. This is the most valuable treasure among all treasures to possess and to rejoice. So Merry Christmas. Om Shanti. Any questions? None. Okay, we'll have meditation and I think Miraben must have arranged something more. Hey, kuch? <laughs>